Uh, today we're going to go over a few beginner mistakes that um, people make defensively when somebody's on their back. Okay, so just a couple of things specific to Nogi that are very common fundamental things that we need to know if we want to be able to one, not get submitted from the back and two, actually escape. Okay, because you can go into escapes, you can start going into escapes and move side left and right and do whatever you, you want to do from there. But if you don't have these fundamental defensive, defensive measures in place, it's going to be easy for an experienced person to actually get a submission and on you from the back. So uh, before we get into the technique, guys, as always, thanks so much for subscribing. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below, and share this video with your friends. Okay? So uh, Juan's going to start on my back. Okay? <clears throat> and these are going to be things that are relevant for both sides, overhook and underhook. So we're just going to demonstrate it from seated. Um, and these are, again, very uh, fundamental beginner mistakes that a lot of people make. Okay, first thing we're going to go over, first mistake that I see a lot of people make is where they position their hands on your opponent's strangle arm. Okay, so if he just unlocks his hands here, everybody, even at a beginner level, understands that the arm over the shoulder is going to be your strangle hand. Okay, it's going to be his strangle hand. So that's the, the arm that I have to watch out for. All my attention has to be on this arm. Now we know that we want to have at the very least one hand, okay, or even better two hands, but we need at the very least one hand on our training partner's strangle arm. But where we actually position the, or where on the arm we actually make our grip is important. If I come in and I make grips on Juan's arm just like so, it's relatively easy for him even with just one hand, start moving his hand inside and across, and then it becomes difficult for me to actually hold on to the arm. Okay, he can quite easily, even with just the hand, work it to the inside. Even if I bring it close to my chest, if he starts to move his hand around, he can start coming in. Now he starts to incorporate his second hand, he grabs a hold, gets a one-on-one -on -one grip on my wrist, strips that, and now all of a sudden, I have to fight that hand coming across the, uh, the chin. Now, of course, most people are gonna start off with their hands locked. Okay, and most people know that they want to uh, uh, cover, okay, even at a beginner level, cover their strangle hand. Okay, sometimes you'll see, it's not a hard rule, sometimes you'll see people grab just like that. That makes our job easier as a defensive person, but most of the time people will cover the actual hand, okay, of the strangle arm. Now, what I'm looking to do is rather than just grab anywhere on the uh, on the arm, I want to grab as low as possible, covering my training partner's hand. Okay. Always keep in mind the line of your training partner's thumb. Okay, that's that's where at least my focus goes whenever I'm looking to defend from the back. So as much as possible, we're going to control at the very bottom of the arm, controlling the hand, covering the thumb. Okay, and an analogy that. Uh, uh, John teaches us and that I learned is that you should not be able to see his hand if you're looking directly in front of us. So there's a camera directly in front of us. You should not be able to see Juan's hand, okay, um, with uh, through the camera. But Juan is going to do a good job of covering, so a lot of times I'm not going to be able to get over the, the, the hand. So I'm going to go as low as possible with my thumb inside and get down, okay, all the way to here, as, as low as I can possibly go. Second hand should be in contact with my other hand and get as low as we can possibly go. And then we're looking to draw everything down, okay, and make sure that the hand, the more it's on the same side, okay, you want it at the very least at the center, but the more it's on the same side of the strain arm, the harder it's going to be for him to get it across. The more it's across my chest, the harder it is for me to actually maintain this position, okay, and you can start finger walking, clearing hands, doing things of that nature. Okay, so at the very least, we need to get our thumb inside the wrist and control like so. Hand touching hand, pulling everything down, our chin and our shoulder tucked together, and we're in nice and tight over here. Okay, so your chin should not be up. Very common mistake I see people doing is just grabbing anywhere on the hand, okay, and then it's easy for people to just shoot the hand across. So that's the first, first thing. At some point, he's going to have to let go okay, of his grip over here and then start looking to strip my hands and then start looking to actually uh,
go in for the uh, go in for a submission. If I see that for whatever reason the hand is uncovered, we should come down and actually cover the hand itself, and then from here we can start immediately going into escapes because we're safe from here. Okay, so again, first mistake, guys, the hand positioning. Where on the arm are you looking to get it? As much as possible, I want to be able to cover the hand, keep it tight to my body so it's hard for him to pull it out, and then my second hand comes in nice and close and he tries to free the arm out, it's pretty, pretty tight in there, okay? If his hand is covered, we have to get as low as we can possibly get, okay? So we won't be able to get to the thumb, or to the hand itself. We get as low as possible with our thumb inside the wrist, and we grab just like so. We pull everything across, and then we're in here nice and tight. So first beginner mistake is gonna be the hand positioning. Second beginner mistake, guys, is Let's say now this guy does a good job and he's able to actually start bringing a hand across the shoulder, okay? And I see this thing happening, okay? Whether the hand's initially coming across the shoulder or whether he's got my neck or he's already starting to lock in. I see people all the time, even at higher levels, go in and start looking to pull at the forearm. So again, we're looking at the hand position in here, okay? Where I'm actually gonna grab and, and look to uh, make my grips defensively. If I get a grip, even if we're at the beginnings of it, where Juan just has a hand right on my shoulder, if I grab right on the forearm, Juan can finger walk and walk and walk, and even though I'm significantly bigger and, and, and stronger than Juan, he's gonna still be able to, to, to walk that hand across, okay? It's gonna be difficult for me to actually pull this in, and once the hands are locked, it's done. So again, uh, going back to the beginning, I noted the thumb line, okay? Whenever I feel that I'm losing his strangle hand, my main target is gonna be the line of his thumb. Now, obviously, I can't grab the individual digit, okay? Because that's just a dick move, and it's usually illegal in, in competition. So I can't grab this and snap his thumb off. I have to come in and actually cover the thumb line, okay? With my entire hand here, okay? Now, when he goes to finger walk across, because I control at the very end of his arm, it's gonna be very difficult, and then I can pull, replace, and then get back to that good position that we talked about in the beginning. Also, when you see that the hand's coming across, if I just go to reach for the hand, it's difficult. So I have to physically look in the direction of the hand and pull everything down, replace, tuck my chin, get everything in nice and tight, and then we're back in good defensive position, and then from here, I can start looking to uh, to get my escape, okay? So that's the second common mistake that I see a lot of people making, okay, especially at the beginner level. So it's very fundamental and basic, but it's important that we keep these things in mind. The third mistake that I see people making, I see this happen even at extremely high levels, like black belt world championship level. And the reason for it, and it's understandable, is because competitively, the back scores a lot of points but we cannot neglect the most important, the ultimate finisher in jiu-jitsu, which is uh, actual submissions. I see people getting a hold of both the hooks and looking to strip two hooks out, okay? Maybe you could be able to, you're able to get away with it if it's somebody that's less experienced than you, but for the most part, you should create a good habit of always having one hand at the very least, either the primary hand, okay, or your secondary hand, usually the primary just to be safer, but there are times where it's acceptable if I'm covering the entire hand that you can use your secondary hand, okay, to, uh, to do this, and then use one hand to peel the hooks, okay? This is totally fine, granted that his hand is covered and controlled. I wouldn't even do it if I'm holding the wrist, okay? If it's too risky, it's easy for him to actually get rid of this. Okay, he gets a hold of my wrist, he circles that hand inside, and then from here I find myself having to fight back up to this position. Get yourself to a sound defensive position where the hand is covered, it's pressed up against your chest, now it's gonna take him a second to actually get rid of this, and then from here I can start looking to fall to a side, peel the hook, and then start misaligning my hips and going into all the escapes that we know. Okay, so um, just a few basic common mistakes that a lot of people make 
basic mistakes can be made at all levels, okay? But it's important that, especially if you're starting off in jiu-jitsu or you wanna develop a solid defense, that you keep these few things in mind. So just recapping real quick. First things first is gonna be positioning on the hand, okay? How to initially defend the guy shooting the hand across and actually get into his strangle. We wanna come in and as best as possible, we wanna to try to cover his strangle hand with our own hand, okay? So that you can't actually see the hand, it's covered, and I'm at the very end covering the thumb and the entire hand. When he goes to move it from here, it becomes a little more difficult. And then we reinforce, bringing our two hands together, just like so. We tuck our chin close to our shoulder. And then from here, if possible, we wanna to look to bring our shoulder all the way in. Okay, it's not always possible, but if possible, we wanna to try to do that as much as, as much as we can. Okay, second thing is, um, if he does manage to get the hand across the shoulder, I cannot look to pull at the forearm, okay? There are times where our hand is gonna be up at the wrist and forearm, down here, okay, because he covers it, okay, and then there's nothing we can do, we just get as low as we possibly can. But if the hand shoots across my neck and is getting to my shoulder here and he starts to bring it behind, if I go to the forearm, even on a person that's smaller than you, they're gonna be able to finger walk, finger walk, finger walk, and even as I pull, I find that from here, I'm in trouble, and there's a very high likelihood that he's gonna finish me. Okay, so when we see this happening, the hand comes across, we have to actually look towards the hand. He goes to bring the hand up, that's gonna slow him down, make it hard for him to get his thumb behind my neck, and then from here we go to the thumb line, not the forearm, not the wrist, we go to the thumb line, we peel, and he goes to walk the hand up now, it's pretty hard and it's easy for me to pull this down. Again, now is the perfect time to get that good hand positioning. Cover the hand, bring our hands together, cover the wrist, glue his hand to my chest here as low as possible. And then from here, now it's possible for me to start falling to one side or another uh, and going into my escapes. Or if we're already on a side, just going to the escapes that you know from that side. And the last thing guys, very, very common mistake and probably it's hard to say if it's the most, but it, it, probably the most, the worst mistake that you can make is putting two hands on the hooks and leaving your neck fully exposed. Now it's hard, it's a long distance for me to go as he aggressively goes in and starts to get choked in now from here. You know, it, it, you're going into late stage recovery. So we don't want to ever take two of our hands to the hooks and look to clear hooks out. Okay, it doesn't matter what side we're on for any of these. We always want to have at the very, least one hand, okay, and, and in most cases, one hand, okay, you're gonna have to bring another hand down to come in and assist with the removal of the hooks. If possible, this hand, okay, this is ideal, the hand opposite of his strangle hand, that's gonna be the best one, our primary hand, or at the very least, there's gonna be some cases where it's acceptable to use the second hand. Granted, I have at least this covered. I wouldn't suggest it if you're just at the wrist here, okay, that's gonna be a little bit harder. The hand is covered. The hand is covered here. That's acceptable. The hand is covered. It's acceptable to bring the other hand down and quickly remove a hook. And then from here, we can start falling to a side and start looking to get our head on the floor and do all the things that we do to escape. Okay. So guys, yeah, just three, next one, three beginner uh, mistakes, fundamental things that you need to keep in mind if you want to develop good um, back escapes, okay? You'll see that no matter how advanced you get in the back escapes, these things are always gonna be present across across the board. So if you want to develop a good uh, escape game, okay, you need to keep these fundamental things. You need to avoid making these fundamental mistakes, okay? And you will inherently be able to go into various types of escapes and uh, do well from from the one people have your back. Um, so guys, thanks again for watching the video. Um, if you've subscribed already, thank you very much. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment section below. And as always, you can check out the links down in the description. Thanks guys.